read a sermon written by someone else. When I was uh, getting ready for uh, a prayer sermon, I was going to say when I was getting ready to plagiarize, you know, the uh, uh, comic of the 1950s and 60s, Tom Lair used to say plagiarize, but all we call it research. So anyway, uh, I had chosen the theme and all, and then I found this sermon. It's been written by Father Alexander May. <clears throat> and most of you are not familiar with him. He was a priest in the Soviet Union in the 1970s and 1980s. He graduated from the seminary and from the academy and a graduate degree in theology. And he wrote, immediately began writing books to explain to the average person the teachings of the church, what it, uh, the services and all. And he also wrote books for children uh, in a very simplified manner. He also made himself very popular by uh, being on the radio and appearing on television, debating with the uh, atheist programs. And uh, most of the time when he was through, he made the atheists look a little foolish, and he converted many of them. His probably one of the converts that he had that many of you probably have heard of was uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, was one of his uh, uh, converts. So it's, uh, then in 1990, he was uh, he lived about a quarter of a mile from the church. He was walking to church one Sunday morning and someone snuck up behind him with an ax and murdered him. And uh, because, uh, uh, and they, they never found out who it was. So it's Father Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Today is the Apostle Thomas's day. You remember that the Lord appeared to him in a special way. Ten of the disciples were together when the Lord was having after having conquered death, came to them and said, Peace be with you. These were precious words. He brought peace into the human soul, that peace which also comes to us now. He stood talking to them and sent them out to preach the word of God. However, one of them, Thomas, was not present. When he arrived, the others all rushed to him, saying, Brother Thomas, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas replied and said, Unless I see him and put my fingers in his hand and side, I will not believe. No, I don't. Even though ten people of the brethren were telling him so. He declared, I will not believe it. Sometime later, the disciples had met again, locking the doors from fear of persecution. Suddenly, a familiar voice rang out again, the voice of Jesus, peace be with you. And here he was standing among them. The first of whom he turned was Thomas. Jesus said, Thomas, give me your hand and touch my wounds. Verify them and make sure. But of course, Thomas did not try to do that. As soon as he saw the Lord, he was overwhelmed, fell before him in tears and cried, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. Who is he talking about? Why, you and me. We did not see the Lord during his earthly life. When we see him with our spiritual eyes, he is alive among us, and we have no need to touch him. How many saw him of their own eyes, heard him speak, followed him along the streets, yet did not believe because their hearts did not respond to Christ's call? We, however, have responded. Though we are weak and powerless, though we are very different, we have come to the Lord saying, My Lord and my God. It is true that we seem to sense the Lord's presence as everything around us is from Him and all of it is His. We remember, I remember a scholar who spent many years studying flowers, trees, herbs, all kinds of plants and animals. He made notes on everything and drew up a long list, which is now 30 years later, are used throughout the world. Finally, when he finished his work with the list having living things, he said, God has been near me. I have sensed his presence in his creation. Indeed, the sun above us is the eye of God. The wind's breath is God's voice. All the laws of this world are God's laws, and all reverses and changes of our faith are also from the Lord. We see and sense him in prayer, in the Holy Scriptures, in the sacraments. When the sacred cup is brought to us, it is the real and living Lord who is present here in this church 
is present in all churches of the earth. And people pray to him in the far north, in the deserts, in the mountains, as well as in the populous towns where millions are gathered together. Everywhere there are souls turning to the Lord. They seek him and feel his presence. For they are a hundred times happier and more blessed than those who lived 2,000 years ago. The Lord is with us here, living, resurrected, and giving us his blessing. And we together with the, with the Apostle Thomas bow down before him, saying, Lord, you stand alive before me, my Lord and my God. Amen. Amen.